All right, uh, you got your Bibles out, your phones. I need you to get, get, get ready for the Word because I'm going to give you a lot of Word. It's going to be like a, like a fire hose today coming at you, okay? So are you ready? Okay, that section back there, I'm going to come and preach to you because you're the ones that said you were ready. No, I... Are you ready? Yes. All right. We're a little weak down front because usually it's the ones in the back that are backslidden, but the ones down front, you're the backslidden ones today, John. So, no, I'm teasing. If you're just joining us, we've been on a series that we're calling The Promise. Everybody say The Promise. And this is a series on the Holy Spirit specifically on the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now, I know if you're visiting today, I just threw you way off, but stay with me. And what we have said, we have, we've actually taken you, <clears throat> excuse my voice today, <clears throat> we've taken you through the Old Testament into the New Testament, and we have proven to you through Scripture, not my opinion, not the opinion of the assemblies of God, but, but through the scriptures we have shown you, proven to you, that the promise of the Father is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you've missed that, you need to go back and watch the last two messages, catch up with us, but you'll be all right today. Now, we have defined what that is, and here it is, and I want us to see it again on the screen. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is the indwelling power of God overflowing and influencing the life and the ministry of every believer. Do you see that? It is the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit overflowing in our life and influencing the life and ministry of the believer. Now we're going to pick up at Acts chapter 19, Verses 1 through 6. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. The word says that it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, that is the Apostle Paul, passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. Now, let me just stop right there quick. Why is that important? Because you must know that the day of Pentecost was 25 years before this incident. Now, why is that important? Because there are people and preachers who will tell you, try to convince you, that after the day of Pentecost, nobody ever spoke in tongues again. That after the day of Pentecost, Basically, Pentecost ceased. Makes no sense to me. Let's read on. There he found some disciples. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> and he said to them, here's a question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we've not even heard if there is a Holy Spirit. And so Paul, he says, into then what, what were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. In other words, Paul has found some disciples in Ephesus. They have put their faith in a coming Messiah, and they have received John's baptism to identify them as followers of the coming Messiah. And then we know that Paul tells them whom the coming Messiah was. He says he's already come, and his name is Jesus. And he performed many signs and wonders and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. And he preaches the gospel to them. And we can assume 
that they then received Jesus Christ as their Savior because, read on, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. Now, Father, we want to thank you today for the truth. We want to thank you today for the word of the Lord, that we can stand on it, and as we sang earlier, we can receive it, and we can say yes and amen. And so, Lord, let your spirit today move in our hearts and have his way as we surrender completely to you. We ask that you'll take the word of God and make it very, very clear that a five-year-old could understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. You can be seated. Oh, I love talking about the Holy Spirit. Many of you in this building today, you have a testimony very similar to mine. Not identical, but just similar. In other words, uh, you weren't raised in a church. You really weren't taken to church every Sunday. Uh, you knew very little about God, and what little you knew about, about God was probably not true, right? And, uh, but then after you got saved, there was just a stirring and a hunger and a thirst in your heart, and, and you wanted everything that God had for you. And so, like me, it was very easy for me to step in to, to the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I, I saw it in the Word. I heard it preached. I reached out by faith, and I received it, and God baptized me in the Holy Spirit, and it changed my life. Now, there's another group of people here today totally opposite of me. You went to church all your life, cut your church, uh, teeth on the church pew, right? Right? And uh, perhaps you came from a Pentecostal background. Maybe you were brought to an Assemblies of God church or a Church of God in Christ, some type of Pentecostal background, and you grew up in a church where you saw people raising their hands and shouting hallelujah and speaking in tongues, and you know, you, you saw the gifts of the Spirit. You experienced that on a every weekly basis you saw that in your church but on the other hand you saw the extremes and the abuses Uh, you you saw people speak in tongues on Sunday but they weren't living right on Monday come on you you saw people who claimed to be filled with the Holy Spirit but they didn't show no fruit of the Spirit and so The damage that has done for you is that it makes you very suspicious and very difficult for you to step in and receive all that God has for you. Then there's another group of people here today. In fact, many, many of you. And you come from a very traditional denomination. You you come from... uh, Oh, I don't know, a Lutheran background or a Baptist background or a Presbyterian background or, or even a Catholic background, and, and you went to church possibly every Sunday, and, but the, the problem is, is, is you never really heard about the Holy Spirit. No preacher ever preached on this subject, and if they ever did, it was probably with some type of negative connotation. Um, Perhaps the Holy Spirit was mocked. People who spoke in tongues, they were were mocked by your pastor. Um, You were told, as as a teenager growing up, you were told speaking in tongues is of the devil. And so it's hard for you to receive the promise of God because you've been taught some things that have affected your belief 
about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I got a word for you right now. Listen to me close. Your heart cannot receive what your mind does not believe. Write that down. It's very difficult because your spirit, your heart, cannot receive what your mind does not believe. You've heard me say this before, but what we perceive about God is what we receive from God. I'll say that again. What what we perceive about God oftentimes is what we receive from God. I believe there are two main reasons people do not receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's very simple. Number one is a lack of hunger. That's a heart issue. Number two is a lack of knowledge, and that's a head issue. Let me explain. In a few moments, I'm going to open up these altars, and I'm going to ask everyone that needs the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm going to ask everyone who who hungers and thirsts and wants a fresh anointing and a refilling of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar and receive everything that God has for you. And there's going to be three kinds of people. There will be those of you who reject it. There will be those who reason it, and there will be those who receive it. Those who reject it, there's not a lot that I can help you with, because it really, it it becomes a lack of hunger or desire to want to step into anything more than what you already have. There's no hunger there. And I don't say that in a demeaning way to condemn you or make you feel bad. I'm just saying that's the reality. You know, you, 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 can't, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Yeah. So there's not a lot you can do for people who don't have a hunger to want to really pursue and chase after the presence of God because it's a heart issue. But then... There are those who reason it. And and you'll not receive this baptism in the Holy Spirit because your mind will not allow your spirit to receive what it wants to believe. That's a head issue. Your spirit cannot receive what your mind does not want to believe. Some of you looking at me strange this morning. Let me put it to you another way. It's a true story. There was a young, young boy who was kidnapped, and he was taken to this man's apartment for four years. Imagine that. For four years, this young man was abused extremely, held against his will. Later on, he was able to escape to freedom And it was found out that he had many chances to escape. In fact, when the news heard this, they kept asking the question, if he was being so abused and held against his will, why didn't he run when he had a chance? They later found out because the boy kept being told over and over, if you run to freedom, we're going to kill your family. Now, do you think that this young man wanted his freedom? Sure he did. Do, do you think that he, that he wanted to escape? Absolutely he did. But what was in his heart was being held hostage by what his mind believed. Your spirit cannot receive what your mind does not believe. I see this happen all the time around the altars. People come, and they come with a hungry heart. 
They really want all that God has for them. And they come to the altar and they say, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And you see the Holy Spirit begin to move upon their life. And, and God begins to, just begins to give them their prayer language and they back off because their mind is holding them hostage to what their heart really wants to receive. But then they back off and they go away saying, well, I guess that wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. And it's not because your heart is not hungry for more of God. For you, it's not a heart issue. It's a head issue. Your mind is holding your spirit hostage to the promise of God. Oh, that's good. Your mind is holding your spirit hostage to the promises of God. And today, I am coming with a sword. And I am saying like Jesus, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Come on, somebody. And so today, I, I want to share some things with you that will help your mind to release your heart so that you can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? So let me talk to you today about the blessings of the promise. What are the blessings of living a spirit-filled life? Think about it. You may be sitting here wondering, why in the world should I seek this thing you're talking about, the baptism in the Holy Spirit? I mean, I've, I've got a lot of other problems in my life, Pastor. Why do I need to speak in tongues? Is, isn't there something more valuable? Isn't there something more than just speaking in tongues? What, what is the benefit of me speaking in tongues? Glad you ask. I want you to get your church app out, go to that inbox, write down every one of these notes today because you're going to need these the rest of your life. If nobody's ever taught you this before, some of you already know this, many of you don't. I'm going to give it to you today. What are the blessings of the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Number one, the first blessing is there is a new dimension in your relationship with Jesus. That is what the baptism in the Holy Spirit will give you. He will give you a new dimension in your relationship with Jesus. Now, dimension, by that word, I mean a new experience, a, a, a new level, if you will, I don't like that word level, a new realm of existence in your relationship with God, a new dimension in your relationship with Jesus. How many of you know that our relationship with God is multifaceted, it is multidimensional? It may be news for you today, but God did not save you so that you could just go to heaven. I said, God did not save you just so you could go to heaven. That's not what I read about Jesus in the Bible. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. I come that you might have Zoe, life abundantly. That, that the life that you live with me, Jesus said, would be multifaceted and multidimensional. That's why we read the words in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and it says that we grow from glory to glory to glory to glory. We are being changed constantly by the Spirit of the Lord. God doesn't want you just to be saved. There's a whole lot more to your salvation than just saying a prayer and hoping you make it to heaven. Come on. See, we come into a relationship with Christ like we do when we are newborn babes. Think about it. When we were little babies, we needed somebody to pick us up and, and hold us and put a bottle in our mouth and num, 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 num. And, and then we needed somebody to prop up little David, make sure, you know, put the pillow up there and make sure he can sit up a little bit. 
And then after we do that, we need somebody to watch us as we're taking our first steps, right? And then the next thing you know, we're able to walk on our own. And then we're able to run and play and do all of those kind of things. Listen to me, friend. When we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it opens up a whole new dimension and relationship with Jesus. The Holy Spirit will move us from, from religion to relationship, from a dry, boring, stale, dull religiosity to a vibrant, exciting, prophetic, powerful, spirit-filled life. Hallelujah. Woo! It's, li- it's like seeing a whole new dimension that has always been there, but we've never seen it before. My dad and I were talking about this this past week. Years and years ago, we went to Panama, not Panama City, but Panama. And we, we took our snorkeling gear. <laughs> that was an experience, Dad. And we, we dove down into the sea. And, and it was so cool because everything was so colorful. The fish and the, and the coral reefs and all of those things were really cool. And you know what? That dimension has, all, has always been there. But listen, friend, unless you dive deep into the ocean and experience it for yourself, you'll never know that it was ever there. There is a dimension of God that you must tap into. It's always been there. He's waiting for you to dive in. Oh, yeah. Watch this now. Let me give you the scripture. John 14, 16 through 20. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he's going to give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Watch this now. Whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it neither sees him nor knows him. Now, that doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. It means they can't see him and they can't know him. Ah, but you know him. I love this. He dwells with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Now watch what he says next. In that day. In that day. In what day? In the day that the Holy Spirit comes. He says, you will know. What will we know? That I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. He's going to bring another whole new experience and dimension into what you know. Oh my gosh, this is good. I studied this this past week, and in my little master degree mind that I love to study the Word of God with, I noticed something in that passage when Jesus said, you will know that I am in you. It's an interesting word because in the original Greek, he could have chosen two words for no. He could have used the word oida, which simply means to gain information by reading a book. But he doesn't use that word. He uses another word. He uses the word gnosko, which means it goes beyond information to revelation by way of experience. Oh, that's so good. He says, you will know. On that day when he comes, you will know that I'm in you. You know what happened to me when I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Listen, 
I read the Bible. I, I, I read the Bible. I knew that, that the Bible said God loved me and God forgave me and God chose me and God's called me and God's gifted me and all of those kind of things. But something happened on the day that I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. My information became revelation. And I knew that I knew that I knew. Does any, is anybody identifying with that today? You know that 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 you are forgiven and Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you and no one, nothing can take that away from you. Woo! <laughs> I'm telling you, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's what the baptism in the Holy Spirit will do for you today. He'll give you a joy that the world cannot have and the world can't take away. It is a joy that when the devil comes to try to knock you out and the storms of life try to take you out, that joy is there in your life because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Give God a praise today. And so, so God wants you to experience a new realm of a relationship with him. It is a whole new dimension. He wants you to dive in, dive into the ocean of the Spirit today. Mm. Hallelujah. Number two, a fresh revelation from the Bible. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. When you are filled with the Spirit, you will receive a fresh revelation from the Bible. Now, notice I, I didn't say a new revelation because we don't need a new revelation. We've already got the revelation. It is the revealed will of God. It's called the B-I-B-L-E. But when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, this word, this book comes alive, and, and the words of the pages jump off at you and smite you right in the heart. That's what illumination is what we're talking about here. It is that it's been there all along, you're just seeing it for the very first time. Look at what Jesus said, John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I've already said to you. Look at John 16, 12 through 13. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. In other words, there's some things that you cannot understand unless you are baptized in the Spirit. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Notice, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. I'm telling you, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you'll never read the Bible the same again. It jumps off the pages. It comes alive. Number three, and this is where I want to spend a little bit of time. What is one of the blessings of the baptism in the Holy Spirit? It is an expanded praise and prayer life. The Holy Spirit will change how you worship. Now, now let me define that because when I say worship, your mind immediately goes to singing songs. It has nothing to do with worship. It might, it might be a vehicle, but it has nothing to do with worship. I'm when I say worship, I'm talking about your prayer life. I'm talking about your time with God. I'm talking about your, your coming to church and gathering together as a corporate body. That's what I mean by worship. And the Holy Spirit energizes that and changes that. That's what he did for me. He expanded my prayer life. I noticed that immediately. I began to pray with more passion, and I began to pray more effectively because I had the benefit of speaking in other tongues. Let's, let's walk through that for a moment because that really throws some of you off today. Let me give you the benefits of speaking 
in your prayer language, speaking in tongues. First of all is edification. That's the first benefit and why you ought to pray in tongues. It is for edification. That word to edify, it just simply means to build up. It means to construct. Uh, Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Paul says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. I, I I just got through telling you that your spirit cannot receive what your mind does not believe. Praying in tongues is a way that you bypass your mind. Oh, I'm freaking you out today, I know. Some of you just turned me off online, I know. Let's let's look at Jude 20. Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, how? By singing songs? No. No. By, by going and sitting in a church pew? No, that won't build your holy faith up. By jumping up and down, shouting and dancing? No, that, won't ha- that doesn't have anything to do with it. Building your f- holy faith up how? By praying in the Holy Spirit. Oh, by the way, let me just say to some of you that are very critical about the fact that that we should no longer seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit or pray in an unknown tongue because that passed away with the apostles? Oh, really? Well, this was written right here in A.D. 95. So let me ask you a question. Why in the world would God ask believers to do something that he's up there in heaven saying, ha, ha, you can't do that, but I'm asking you to do it? Makes no sense to me. I'll just throw that out to you. No, he's telling us, here's how you build your holy faith up. You pray in tongues. You pray in the Spirit. Because when we're praying in tongues, what are we doing? I like to say it like this. We're recharging our spiritual battery. We're we're plugging in for a fresh charge. We're, We're getting refreshed and renewed by the Spirit of the Lord. How many of you know we get we we get heavy sometimes? I mean, life can wear us out. And praying in tongues, praying in our heavenly prayer language is what recharges up our, our, our spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 through 4. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. Now, people say this to me. Pastor, I, I, I don't think I should be speaking in tongues because I don't understand what I'm saying. You're right. You got it. No one, no one understands when they're speaking in tongues. It sounds like gibberish. We don't know what we're saying. We're not supposed to know what we're saying. What are we doing? We're praying in the Spirit mysteries. Does not your Bible say that? It says, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church. Let me put it to you simply. Praying in the Spirit, praying in your heavenly language is for you. It's for edifying yourself. It's for strengthening yourself. Speaking in a prophetic utterance is for the corporate body. It is for the church. That's exactly what Paul says. There's there's no rhyme or reason or no way to get around that. That's exactly what Paul says. Speaking in tongues is for us. Speaking prophetically is for the church. So when I'm praying in the spirit, what am I doing? I'm praying mysteries. I'm praying secret things between the Lord and I. I'm I'm having such intimacy with the Father that the spirit is bypassing my mind and speaking directly to God. 
don't, don't you want that kind of intimacy with the Father? He wants that intimacy with you. That's why we need this precious gift of the Holy Spirit. It opens up a whole new dimension in our prayer life, and you need it for your life. Number two, what's the second benefit of speaking in tongues? Watch this now. It is a prophetic dimension of praise. A prophetic dimension of praise. <laughs> Some of you looking at me like, a pathetic what? A prophetic dimension of praise. I, uh, I'm running out of time. Anyway, before COVID, I was on a series. I was just getting into a series on building God a house, a tabernacle of praise. I'm going to come back to that when the Lord releases me to do that. But, but God's, God's given me a vision. I've even put it in our vision statement that, that there would be such a prophetic praise in this house that it would shake all of hell in Poland, Ohio. Amen. That when people walk into this place, listen to me, I, I just, I hear the Lord saying that it'll be like the days in the Old Testament where the glory of God is so heavy that the people of God are falling on their faces because of the Shekinah, the cloud, the glory of God that'll be over this house. But I also hear God saying, if you want it, church, you got to hunger for it. You got to go after it with all of your heart and you got to be us filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a, I'm talking about a prophetic dimension of praise. Look at, look at what Paul says about this, 1 Corinthians 14 again. He says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? He says, I'm going to pray with the Spirit. In other words, I'm going to pray with tongues, but I'm also going to pray with understanding. I'm not just going to be one-sided. I'm not only going to pray with my mind where I can understand it, but I'm also going to pray in my heavenly prayer language where I, I don't have a clue what I'm praying. But then he says something else. He says, I will sing with the Spirit. That means sing in tongues. I will sing out in tongues. I will also sing with the understanding. I want to tell you something, church, that there's something powerful that happens when there's a moment in our praise time where the Holy Spirit is released in the house and in unison and in one accord we begin to sing out in the Spirit and we begin to sing out in tongues. It is okay for you to pray and to sing in tongues in church. It's okay. Do you hear me? Now, now, I'm not saying it's okay for you to draw attention to yourself. I'm saying as it, as it was even in the Old Testament where they lifted their voice and they in one accord were praying and praising God just like in Acts in one accord they were praising and praying God, praising God together in one accord. The same is true with us. It is okay for you to sing out in tongues in church. I want you to know that. Mm. The blessing of the baptism is an expanded praise and prayer life. I'm going to finish on time. Here's a fourth blessing. A new authority and power. A new authority and power. What do I mean by that? First of all, I mean a boldness in our witnessing. I'm talking about sharing our faith. I'm talking about just being a witness for Christ. I'm not talking about going door to door like a Jehovah witness and knocking on the door and standing there with a Bible trying to explain that. You can do that if you want to. But I'm just talking about being a witness for Christ, the, the, the power and the authority that comes from that. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power. The word is dunamis. It means authority, the enabling of the Spirit. 
You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts 4, 31, when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They spoke the word of God with boldness. Some of you need that boldness. Not obnoxiousness, but boldness, confidence to give a witness for Christ. That's what happened to me when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I couldn't help but tell people about Jesus. I, I remember the, the, the day after, it was on a Sunday night, the day after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I, I went running down to the end of the street, and, and there was this dear old lady in her garden, in, working in the garden, and I just, just randomly walked up to her, and I said, wow, you won't believe what happened to me at church last night. Like, Jesus is real. Like, I met Jesus, like, really powerful, and I, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. She said, do what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I, I was talking to a nightclub friend of mine that I used to play in the bars with, and I was saying, man, I got to tell you about this thing called the baptism in the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. And I got to tell you, Jesus has become so real to me. And here's what he said. Yeah, I tried that Christianity stuff. It doesn't work. And I thought to myself, yeah, that's what you got is religion. But I found a relationship with Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! So God will fill you with boldness in your witness for Christ. Let her be there. In your notes, what is a, a, another blessing of the authority and power? Is increased fruit of the Spirit. I love this. Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against which there is no law if we walk in the Spirit. Man, I'm telling you, that this is what the world needs to see. They need to see a Spirit-filled church that's not spooky and wacky and flaky and granola bars and fruits and cakes and... They need to see a church that is baptized in love. Love, where we love one another. Don't tell me that you're filled with the Spirit and you can't love somebody that's a different color than you. Okay, I'll quit. All right. Don't, don't tell me that you're filled with the Spirit and because somebody's a Republican, you can't get along with them. or a Democrat. Thank you very much. Come on, man. So, some of us, we, we, gotta, we gotta be baptized in the Holy Spirit just so we can be a little bit more kind. I mean, my God, people. We gotta show some kindness toward one another. Some of you are so stinking critical, complaining about every, I, mean, I don't like this, I don't like that. Shut up and get filled with the Spirit. I know, that wasn't very kind. I know, I need to be filled with the Spirit. Last one. Power for signs and wonders. That's another thing the church needs in these last days. I'm talking about being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that signs and wonders are demonstrated. Listen to that. Jesus says this. He says, these signs will follow those who believe. Read that again. These signs will follow. We don't seek after signs. Do you hear me today? We, we don't go, well, I'm not going to New Life because they started a new church over here and they've got all kinds of signs and wonders, so I'm going to follow that one. Or, or I'm going to quit going here and I'm going there because they've got the signs and I'm going to quit going there and hop, 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 hop. No, these signs shall follow me. I'm a believer. Signs, ought, I ought to have signs following me. 
What are the signs? Let's read them. They will cast out demons. You're looking at a preacher who believes there are demon spirits at work in Poland, Ohio. There are racial demons. Some of you got some. There, there, there are spirits that are at, there are spirits of alcoholism and drug addiction. There are spirits of sexual perversion. These are demon spirits. And we have a, something we need to do with those things. Well, let's sit down and counsel them. You can't counsel a demon. You cast them out in the name of Jesus. I said you cast them out in the name of Jesus. You can't counsel a demonic spirit. You got to cast him out. You don't play around with the devil. You say, in the name of Jesus, spirit come out. I'm talking about demon spirits. That's one of the signs that ought to be following us everywhere we go. They will speak with new tongues. If, and it should be, if they take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. That's a big if because I'm never going to take up a serpent anyway. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I believe that. That's a sign that ought to be following me around. I ought to be casting out devils. I ought to see people speaking in new tongues when I lay my hands on them. Come on. Like, like Pastor Tim said last week, we're not commanding God. We're putting a demand on the Word of God. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, Father, until I see these signs in my own life, I need to be more filled with the Holy Spirit. I need more of you. I need more of your anointing. I, I, I need more of you. I need less of me. And I want to see more of these signs and wonders following me. I'm not looking for them. I'm wanting them to follow me. So that when I am standing in the grocery store, like I told you before, and that dear lady standing in front of me, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, God said to pay for your groceries. I had no clue where she was from, what she was facing. Come to find out, her husband had died that week. She was trying to figure out how she was going to pay for her groceries. And then that happens, and then I can tell her about Jesus. Guess what? The next week, she comes to our church with her granddaughter, gives her life to Christ. That's a sign and a wonder. I want to see more of that in my life. Listen, I want to see more of that in your life. Imagine if all of us were so sensitive and overflowing and being influenced by the Spirit of God that we would obey Him, even on the simple things. You're walking through Walmart. God says, I want you to speak to that person. And whatever it is, you begin to open your mouth and start speaking things. And they're like, wow, how did you even know that? That's a tool. That's a gift that God puts in our hand for that moment and that time. That comes through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, this is real. This is real stuff. This isn't, a, this isn't an assemblies of God doctrine that, that I'm required to preach up here on Sunday. This is like a way of life that we should be living this way. The Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not like, like a goal that we achieve. It's a gateway that we enter. Did you, did you hear that? The Holy Spirit is not not a goal that we achieve. Well, I, I, I speak in tongues. I've arrived now. No. That's simply a gateway that you step into. And there's a whole new dimension of things in that. 
Imagine if all you ever did was come in on Sunday and all you ever got to do was walk through and you stopped out there in the foyer and you went nowhere else around here. This is a beautiful facility. But you never got to experience any of these other rooms because all you ever did was step into the front door and just stood there. As great as our salvation is, and it is wonderful, as great as it is to be forgiven and accepted and loved by God, there's nothing like it. God is saying, I got a lot more rooms for you to experience. Step in. Step into it. Step into a new dimension in your relationship with Jesus. God is saying, I've got so much more for you to experience in me. So much more glory. So much more love and power and joy and peace. It comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me today? Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to ask you a question that the Apostle Paul asked those believers. They were already believers. This isn't about being saved. I'm going to ask you the question, and you got to answer it. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Have you received this wonderful promise from God, the promise of the Father, the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues? Have you received this since you believed? This is a gift for you. Uh, your children, your children's children, to all who are afar off, and to as many as the Lord our God will call. It's for you. So I'm going to ask today, those of you that are hungry and thirsty, and you want more of Jesus, maybe you've never received this baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want you to get out of your seat. As they begin to lead us in worship, there are those of you that you were once filled with the Holy Spirit and and just life has happened and you just need a refreshing from the Lord. Would you let us lay hands on you and pray with you this morning? They're going to lead us and as they do, would you come and let's fill these altars today and let's take time to receive this wonderful gift from God. Come on, would you come as they say? Hey, we hope you enjoyed the message today. And before you leave, make sure you go to our YouTube page and subscribe and check out our website. New Life exists to love God and lead people to live a better story. So whether you're gonna continue to listen to us online or come see us in person, we hope to see you again real soon.